<laughs> okay, hey, welcome to Banjo Blitz. Today I have an assistant in the studio. My lovely daughter Violet is behind the camera and running the audio for me. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep a straight face. She definitely is not gonna be able to keep a straight face. If you hear laughing, it's probably from her. Okay, so today we are going to tackle the almighty brush stroke. I tend to not teach the brush stroke in the very beginning for a couple reasons I will get to at the end of this video. Let me show you the pattern for this week. We're gonna piggyback on last week's episode where we took a quarter note, eighth note, and two eighth note pattern and paired it with a check pattern, which is all eighth notes. We're gonna do the same thing with the brush stroke so you can sort of stay on top of your timing and the mechanics of making the brush stroke happen. So here is this week's pattern. gave me the thumbs up, so I'm doing good. Okay, I'm gonna play it faster now. Here we go. Just like all Banjo Blitz episodes and lessons, you wanna try this at a variety of different tempos. Use a metronome, don't use a metronome, just put yourself through the paces on this pattern. I know it is deceptively simple, but here is what is complicating this, this pattern. Normally we are taught, well, at least I teach in the beginning, to plunge your hand straight into the banjo to get maximum tone and volume. We're not traveling laterally at all. We're, we're treating the banjo as if it's a drum plunging straight down into the banjo like we're breaking a board in, in a martial art and, and traveling through the string. Here, with the brush stroke, we've got to travel laterally across the strings, which complicates and slows down the motion a little bit, or it makes you slow it down because you can't, you can't shift your movement and be going really fast. So here's the deal. What you want to do is, after your first downstroke, you're gonna prep your hand for the brush and you're gonna pretend like you're going to attack the fourth string for a single note on the next downstroke. But you're not going to get the single note there. You're gonna rake through the strings and get them all ringing at once. That was a little bit too arpeggiated. Let me try again, here we go. Like just a clean strum right through, not like the Galax Lick where we're going for an arpeggiated sound. So aim for that four string. Now the brush doesn't have to take place from four, three, two, one. You can do brush strokes starting at the third string, in which case you'll aim for that third string on when you, when you lift up and you prepare for your next down stroke. That was a three string brush, you can do a two string brush with the uh, next down stroke starting on the open second. And that gives you that gives you a variety of different brushes. You've got a four note brush, a three note brush, and even a two note brush. Don't shy away from those three and two note brushes. They can often be just as powerful as a full brush, but the nice thing about them is that they are, they're cleaner, they're leaner, they're, gonna, they're not gonna ring so heavily and muddy up your sound. Okay, so that's it. We are, just keep in mind, we are breaking a major rule that we established early in Banjo Blitz. And I love to break rules, so this is good. We are not, for the brush, we are not traveling straight into the banjo anymore. We have to go laterally across the strings to get that sound. And that's okay, even though we're kind of bending some rules that we established earlier on in Banjo Blitz. But use your check pattern to remind yourself that that golden rule still still holds true, you're plunging straight into the banjo, thumb lands on that fifth string regardless of whether you're sounding it or not, and when you come back up to prepare for your next downstroke on your upstroke, your thumb is leaving the string, the fifth string, regardless of whether or not you're going to sound it. Those two things have to be in play, and straight travel is always really good for tone, timing, speed, and relaxation except when you're playing the brush. Okay, speaking of tone, next week we're going to talk about tone and how you can get the very best tone that you have. <laughs>